This is every transmuter in Hunter Hunter ranked by a man on the internet, and we are going to start with the undisputed queen of transmutation, as well as scantily clad men's magazine enthusiast. So first up, transmutation is a fairly simple affinity. It's the practice of changing your raw aura into a substance, and in the case of Bisky, she transmutes aura into a super lotion, which is then used for massage purposes. Sounds a bit underwhelming at first, but a 30 minute massage can have the same effect on the body that eight hours of sleep achieves. It relieves both physical and mental fatigue. So not so underwhelming anymore because her abilities could theoretically eliminate the need for sleep. You could live a whole third more of life than other people with the same time as them. However, the real life hack being used by Bisky here is that the special transmuted lotion restores more aura than it costs to activate the ability. So Bisky has well and truly worked out how to invest her aura in order to pay Nen dividends or perhaps even dividends. She's worked out how to completely cheat life through her transmutation and some clever restrictions. I mean, if you want to call being massaged by a cute Nen girl named Cookie a restriction. And I suppose if you were to put the ability into an equation, then it would look like massage benefits equal aura equals lotion times Cookie minus time. There is also the body transformation, which we won't linger on because that, well, that's something of a Nen enigma. And it doesn't matter for our purposes here anyway, because with the massage alone, Bisky is an easy S tier transmuter. Also, this video is sponsored by Factor. Fresh, ready-made meals delivered straight to your doorstep. These things are like a lifesaver for me. I don't have the time to cook and I love that Factor removes all of the annoying parts like meal planning and prepping. The convenience is unparalleled. Whilst also providing no nonsense delicious food that also meets your nutritional needs. Also, absolutely most underrated benefit, no mess. No dishes to wash, no pots to soak, no realizing that you've run out of dishwashing liquid again, Liam. And also no potato peelers to meticulously remove all the crap from. Everything is ready to eat within two minutes and cleaned up in a mere fraction of that time. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGNEWWORDFEB, use code that one, the one on screen, for 50% off your first box. And once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. So do that thing, but for now it's back to you, me. In stark contrast to Miss Kruger, we now have Phaetan, who transmutes pain into, well, more pain. I mean, not exactly. More accurately, an ability like Rising Sun could be described as painful output equals aura times damage taken. And because the restriction is just a little bit more costly than receiving a delightsome massage, the output is significantly higher. The raw power generated by Rising Sun alone would put big bang characters like Uvagin to shame. Get in, get in the corner, Uvagin, the shame corner. And I like that even though we didn't see Phaetan in action until the Chimera Antarch, this ability was seeded through his love of administering torture. It's implied that Phaetan has other abilities as well, but it doesn't matter, as Rising Sun alone shows that Phaetan is a supreme transmuter and belongs nowhere but the S tier. For a new phase now, here's Hanzo, a man who was recently labeled a transmuter by Yoshihiro Togashi in the exhibition memo. To be honest, I'm a little surprised that it actually took this this long to find out Hanzo's affinity, because he never shuts up about his secrets. In fact, the best word to describe Hanzo is loquacious, which is essentially a nice way of saying he talks. He he talks a lot. If you ever need to tell someone to very politely shut up, then just say, my, you're, you're rather loquacious today. And they'll probably take it as a compliment because they're unlikely to know what it means, but also too proud to actually ask what it means. So they'll just go, yes. I will say that this revelation is exceptionally unfortunate for Hanzo at the moment, because as with a lot of Togashi's strange revelations, transmutation goes against Hanzo's current skill set as demonstrated. The ability we have seen is Hanzo's skill number four, which creates an astrally projected Nen clone through the powers of conjuration and manipulation, potentially even emission instead of conjuration. But if that were the case, then that would just make Hanzo an even worse transmuter because emission is further away than conjuration on the Nen ring. So to put the efficacy into some perspective, Hanzo's equation would look like Hanzo's skill number four equals aura times conjuration plus aura times manipulation, which comes at the cost of 0 0.8 and 0 0.4 for respectively. So if there was one unit of aura in each, then two units of aura invested would result in 1.2 units of output. It's not great, but it does give Hanzo the skill he needs. And you don't necessarily need to use aura at its most efficient to be a great Nen user. And that's what Hanzo is. He is a great Nen user. Unfortunately, from what we know, he's a transmuter who doesn't actually transmute, which means that we have no choice but to open up the Castro tier quite early, a special place reserved for Nen users who almost, if not completely, deny their own affinities. Hanzo's exact Matey Soka, however, is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and is potentially the greatest example of a pure transmuter. Hisoka is like some sort of Nen piano with a single key because he is very one note. Hisoka, what's that on your fingers? Bungee gum. Hisoka, what are you sticking under your desk? Bungee gum. Hisoka, what are you using to sodomize that young child? Text your surprise. Oh, well, at least it isn't. The surprise is that it's bungee gum. And to be fair, it works. Hisoka operates at almost 100% aura efficiency 
frequency at any given time. He is the transmuter we all dream of being, as well as the person we all dream of never encountering in some sort of dark alley or even a fully lit alley. And his net equation is as follows. Bungie gum equals aura plus intelligence times arousal. I hope you're writing all of these down, by the way. There will be a test. Hisoka extracts the absolute most from his transmutation and applies it nigh on flawlessly, which is why the S tier isn't even good enough for him. And we are going to have to open up an unprecedented gum tier. Next up is the boy who failed the hunter exam, but succeeded in winning our hearts, quite literally in the case of Jonas. And just look at Killua sticking his little pinky up as if he's serving tea to the queen. What a, what a high class assassin boy. But really Killua is the very model of excellence. He has never failed at anything except for gambling. He's, he's really bad at gambling. And he receives full marks for choosing the most difficult, volatile and rapidly aura consuming substance he possibly could to transmute into electricity. The ultimate optimist really, turning all of his horrific childhood torture into his greatest weapon. And we do have the restriction of needing to be charged all the time. So Killua is very much that friend who always has less than 10% on their phone for reasons that nobody else can comprehend, except that Killua is also the phone itself. But hey, that is still a bargain price to pay for the output. Killua is a marvelous combination of raw talent, sharp thinking and hard training, all of which will reward him as an S tier transmuter. For some more phantom troop shenaniganry, here's Marchi. Say hello to Marchi. She enjoys string, as well as long walks in the dark on her own, plotting the brutal, brutal murder of Hisoka. But transmutation is actually quite rare because it gives you the illusion of a physical object being transmuted. That would usually be the realm of conjuration. But this is because Marchi is actually a dual affinity wielder, sitting right between transmutation and enhancement on the Nen ring. So she crafts the string substance and then enhances it to the point where one meter of string could lift one ton of weight. And the longer the strings go, the less effective they become. Allegedly, she could create a string strong enough to circumnavigate the globe, but it would snap when confronted by even a gentle breeze. Incredibly versatile though. And Marchi is actually the first known troop member to become a Nen user, having been taught by a mysterious embalmer named Renko. Furthermore, despite her sparse and really rather subtle appearances in the actual series, Marchi is one of the favored characters of the Hunter Hunter Mabaga card game, with variants including Santa Marchi, Wedding Marchi, and of course, provocative fantasy policewoman Marchi. There is a Marchi for every occasion, but despite a very effective ability and well thought out restrictions, Marchi is a distinct grade below many of the other transmuters we've already mentioned, and so she will be receiving a solid A. And now I'd like to bring your attention to Matvera. That's a lie, I don't want to bring anyone's attention to Matvera. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, to be honest with you. But he is a transmuter, so we, we do need to talk. A transmuter who desperately, desperately wishes he was an emitter. Incredibly inexperienced, incredibly underqualified, and possessing of incredibly shockingly big lips. Now to some other people, that might be a point in his favor for, for other reasons, but it definitely doesn't help with transmutation, I think. And so he is getting kicked straight in the Castro's until further notice. So let's cleanse our palate with men. <laughs> so fun fact, I actually have it in the script to mispronounce his name, but I, I wasn't trying to, that just happened. This is why we as a fan base all agree to just call him Yupi. Although he is often considered the least intelligent of the Royal Guard, Yupi is certainly the member who delved deepest into how best to make Nen work for his own personal needs. Pito makes all sorts of whimsical and not at all well thought out abilities. Meanwhile, Poof's Nen evolution doesn't exist and Shia Poof was just kind of overpowered and a bit stagnant from the get go. But we see Yupi's Nen evolution happen in real time. Like Fei Tan with pain, Yupi harnesses the power of rage, which he even takes a step further than Fei Tan by managing to harness his rage into a more condensed form. And after acquiring the ability, Meruem then perfects it by channeling all of this devastating power into a singular clean beam. Also, here's a really weird fact. Yupi and Shia Poof are the only two Chimera Ants to have five fingers. 10 in total, five on each hand. Which I find especially odd because Yupi is composed of Chimera Ant and Magical Beasts. There is theoretically no human in his DNA, and yet he ends up looking like one of the most human Chimera Ants. But due to significantly outclassing even the S tier transmuters, we have no choice but to give Hisoka a roommate in the newly established gum tier. This is a very, very top heavy tier list so far. Transmuters apparently just do not F around. But here is the most important character that many of you will never even have heard of, primarily, because he's not in the actual series. But his name is Moritonio, a circus director, and the man who taught Hisoka Nen, allegedly. He appears in the one-shot chapter drawn by Sui Ishida, which examines Hisoka's past. Whether that's actually canon or not, it's up in the air. But Togashi did approve the story for, for whatever that means. The sad thing is, outside of that chapter, we have no images of Moritonio. However, his aesthetic can be surprisingly accurately summed up by this Mabaga card of Magic Machi. Because like I said, there is a Machi for all occasions. So Moritonio transmits 
transmutes aura into magnetic force, which then allows him to do all sorts of crazy crap like walk on the walls and the ceilings. It's also implied that his Scarface ability, which is Scarface, not Scarface. I only just realized that was a bit of a pun there. But it's also implied that his Scarface ability is what inspired Hisoka's texture surprise, because it's the same thing, but specifically with faces. In fact, Moritonio is very much a beta test for Hisoka in general, super powerful, incredibly intelligent, but not really reaching the full heights of transmutation. So he's going to join Machi in the A tier. Meanwhile, here's Porcupine. This is going to be a pretty open and shut case. He is a transmuter who used exclusively enhancement and manipulation. So mate, you are getting a good old castroing for that. Which brings us to Sardiso, a transmuter who I would describe as having accomplished the bare minimum. After having both of his arms severed, he then went on to replace them with these funky Nen tentacles. Nen tentacles. He replaced them with Nen tentacles. What he does on a very basic level is extremely similar to bungee gum, except Sardiso's substance has no properties of any note. And also he is transmuting far, far too much aura volume, whereas Hisoka goes for a more correct, precise volume. Although weirdly enough, Sardiso is even worse in the 1999 anime because he still has both of his arms. The 1999 anime actually gets rid of the disabilities of all of the Heavens Arena trio. Even Guido, the dude still has both of his legs. But the funniest is probably Riovelt, because instead of being bound to a wheelchair and making the best of a tragic situation, he instead chooses, I repeat chooses, to fight exclusively on a mobility scooter. Back to Sardiso, he's pretty rubbish, but at least he tried. If I was Sardiso's almost certainly disappointed teacher, then I would give him the bare minimum for a passing grade, which in this case is a C tier. To Silver Zoldic now, and we will not be ranking him in this video, nor will we be ranking Zeno Zoldic, because Togashi threw a bit of a bombshell at us recently, revealing that these two are both in fact emitters, not transmuters. Transmutation has taken a really heavy loss with these two. This used to be like the stacked affinity, and now that belongs to emitters. But in honor of their service, they will be recognized all the way over here in the used to be a transmuter tier. To dessert now, and may I present you with a rather unsatisfying souffle. Another Hale Lee member, so, so, uh, but at least one that doesn't deny their own affinity, which saves her from a thorough, and I mean thorough, castroing. But with the nothing we know about her abilities and the everything we know about her inexperience with Nen, it is going to be a D tier for now. Which brings us to potentially the ultimate transmuter. I feel like I'm opening a pack of rare cards. Inside of this pack could be everything or nothing. Wealth, fame, power, or it could be nothing. And it's worm, so it's nothing. His ability is to burrow through the ground like, like a regular worm. It's not even transmuting anything. He's more like manipulating the dirt or manipulating his body or both. And I know I said there was a Marchi for all occasions, but in this case, the closest a character has come to cosplaying worm is actually Illumi that one time that he got in the hole. But worm is a clear Castro contender and that is every transmuter ranked arbitrarily by a man on the internet.